LOIC traders to degrees here and today we're gonna code up this Friday Asian range concept by ICT. The point of the specific concept is to use the Friday's Asian range which is from 7 p.m. to midnight on Thursday to outline a potential drawn liquidity for the next trading week. Um, this is really powerful because it gives great parameters for PD arrays and higher strength from PD arrays specifically for us to frame our high probability trades. Okay, let's get started. Let's rename our indicator to ICT Friday's Asian range concept. And we're going to do the same for our indicator here. And we're going to make it overlay true and give it our max bars back as 500, as well as giving it the 500 limit for all our drawings. ICT teaches us that this concept is only valid on the five and the 50 minute chart. So we're going to make a little runtime error for the user so that if they go to a different time frame, the indicator will do nothing. To do that, we are going to compare the time frame, specifically the seconds inside of the time frame from the current time frame with the time frame that we care about. In this case, we're going to have the five and the 15 minute. If it's neither, then we're going to have a runtime error. Now we can start by giving some global variables that we're going to use. And I'm just going to import these from one of my libraries. These are just going to be something to help us with defining line styles for all the lines we're going to plot. And this is just to give a transparent color. So we're going to have a color with 100% transparency. Now let's talk about the user inputs. So for user inputs, we're going to need a few things. We're going to be needing the box and the lines for the Asian range. And for the specific concept, we have two types of Asian ranges. We have an Asian range defined from the high and the low of the wicks. So the highest wick and the lowest wick, as well as the body. So the highest body and the lowest body. I think it's also going to be good to have a historical session parameter so we can see just the current one or we can go back a few up to a specific amount that we'll define and i also want to make alerts for this so we're going to have to put some variables in there to make sure that we can take care of the alerts So next, let's talk about the uh, declarations. And I think we're just going to need one function specifically. So it should be pretty easy. And let's see what we're going to need. So we're going to be saving boxes and lines. And I think we're also going to have to make labels because that was in the script request. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to need three arrays. Let's talk about our uh, variables here. So we're going to need quite a few, I guess. Um, can I, let's talk, now let's talk about our variables. We're going to need two variables for time. So the beginning and the end of the Asian range. And then we're going to be need to track the highest and lowest point of the Asian ranges. Now we can move to alerts. We're going to need quite a few variables. We're going to be needing four uh, sets of variables and we're gonna need one for the alert of the body asian range but the standard deviation is set above so we're just gonna call it up standard to false and we're gonna have the same thing for the body but down so below and we're gonna duplicate these for the wicks And then as well as these, we're going to need to save the levels at which these uh, occur. Perfect. Now let's talk about our function. So since we're going to be needing to figure out which one of the lines we're going to be using the alert for and which is going to extend to the next week, we are going to need to sort of create a selector almost. And I have a function for this, but I'm going to write it for you so I can get you through it. The way this works is very simple. 
uh, we're going to have our ID tell us the specific number of the standard deviation we're looking for and the type is going to tell us if it's a wick or a body. Now, if we don't pass in the price, we're going to be using this to extend the line plot to the next week. Whereas if we do present it, then it's just going to return the specific price so that we can figure out exactly when to be alerted. The first case, if no price is passed through, so we want to use this to plot forward, we're just going to define the end point of the lines. If the ID plus the type, so the number plus the B or W is equal to the alert that we have saved in the settings, then we're going to have the start of the line plus to get to the end, we need seven days because it's to the next week and a day is 86,400 seconds. But in PineScript, we use milliseconds, so we need to add three zeros. And then we're going to have the same scenario, but instead of the body alert line, we're going to have the quick. Now, if it's neither, then we're just going to use our the end of our Aiden range, which we already declared up here, and we're going to be saving later on. Now, this is case one. And we have case two, meaning what happens if we actually put in price in this uh, specific function, then we just need to return it so that we know when to be alerted at. So we're just going to take this just for the ease of writing. And these two are going to be changed to price. And this is going to be enough. Okay, now we can get to the logic. Let's start from defining our Asian range time. So for the specific concept, we need it to be on Thursday because it's from Thursday, Thursday from 19 hour to midnight and we need to be in New York time. So let's do that. So if the day of the week for the current time in America, New York, which is our EST time, time zone is equal to five, which is Thursday because in Pinescape we start counting from Sunday and the current time to the one minute this doesn't really count but good measure and if this time is from 1900 to midnight or just about of any day i'm just going to do this then this is just going to turn true so if this is true meaning these two conditions are both correct then we're gonna know we're inside of the asian range so now we can work with that so if it's the time of the Asian range, we're going to have two cases. One is if it just started and the other one is if we're currently inside of it. So if it just starts, we need to set our variables to basically zero, meaning we're going to need to initialize them again so that we can figure out what the highest and lowest points of the ranges are. And we're going to have to do this for both the bodies and the wicks. If the range time variable from the previous candle was not instead of the range, meaning this is the first one that is in the range. Then we're going to save the time for the Asian range start, and we're going to initialize all of our variables. For the specific body high, we're going to need to check which one is highest between the open and the close, whereas for the low, the opposite. Whereas for the wicks is much easier, we just need to select the low and the high respectively. On the other hand, if we are if this is not the case or we're inside of the Asian range time, um, we need to update these variables. So let's take these. We're going to need to now check whether the current highest open or close is higher than the one that we've saved. And this same concept is going to have to apply for all four of these. Let's try and plot these things to see if we're doing it correctly. During this window of time, we're going to, we're going to adjust these values and they're going to be reset it again on the next. Friday's Asian range. So this is, believe it or not, our logic. That's it. Now, the heavy lifting for the script is going to be on the plot side. Let's continue from here. So here we say if we are inside of the range. So I guess if we're not inside of the range, what we can do is do the similar thing to here. So we want to be plotting all the lines for the Asian range once the Asian range is closed. We don't really want to see it adapting while the Asian range is developing because that would be messy. So we're going to say if the range time of the previous candle was true, and remember we're currently in the clause of this is not the range time. So we're not inside of it. 
and we're checking if the previous one was. So we're basically saying, is this the first scam that is outside of the Asian range after it has developed? So here we're going to do our plot work, but I'm also going to take the opportunity to reset these variables so that once the new Asian range is set, then we're going to start looking for these specific alerts again if they're turned on. So this, that just basically means just put these to true. You'll see why later. To make our life easier, we know that this is the end of the Asian range. So we're going to save that. And then what could be handy is to save the specific range values for our two different types. So we have the body high minus the body low and the same thing. Now we can actually start plotting things. So let's start from our boxes, which was our Asian range array. So this one right here. And we're going to be pushing both the body and the wig boxes. Now we're going to unshift it actually. So we're going to put it at the beginning of the array. So this is going to help us later on to remove what is not considered a historical session in our setting right at the beginning. So this setting right here. In both cases, we're going to make a new box. We're going to start to plot it from the start of our Asian range. Here, we're going to have to have the high of it. And then we're going to stop plotting it at the end of the Asian range. And we're going to have the low of it. Then our border color is going to be no color. And this is where that variable that we imported earlier comes in handy. So we can put the width of zero for the border. And then we need to be locking this specific box to time instead of the number of the bar. Lastly, we have our background color. So the color of the box is actually going to show. And we did save, I believe, the box color. So now all we need to do is change all of these to WIC. Now we're going to move on to plotting the lines, the labels, and taking care of the alerts. We're going to have 20 standard deviation lines. It's going to be five per side per range. So we're going to take advantage of a for loop. One to five, moving by one. And we're going to first define our standard deviations. So we're going to have a standard deviation value up first. It's going to be equal to the body high range plus. And here we're going to take advantage of our i from the for loop times the body range. And this is going to be our above. And then we're going to just repeat this four times for all the different types. Let's start from the alerts. We have our alert variables that we saved for the levels. So we can save them. And here's where our function is going to come in handy. We are going to use our util function for our alert line. And we're going to pass in our ID. And then we're going to pass in the type, which is going to be the B or the W. And then our standard deviations. Now for the actual lines. So we are going to be pushing into the standard deviation array, which is our line array right here. And we're going to unshift rather than push. And it's going to be a new line. It starts at the start of the Asian range. It's going to be our standard deviation body up level. And here's where we are going to use our function again. But this time we're going to omit the price and this is why we have to cast it into an int and we're just going to give it the id and the type next we just have our customization and we're going to make sure to lock to time we're going to repeat this for all four types of lines now if we save we can see how all the lines for every single one of these is getting plotted and most importantly when we change our alert line, these are going to move accordingly, which is pretty neat. And now for the labels, we're going to have labels to the left of every line, at the beginning of the agent range. So we're going to push into our label array, and we're going to have this to the beginning of the agent range. We're going to use standard deviation level, and then the label, so the text we're going to have. Going to be in this case a plus and we're going to have a string of i one two three four five plus the type 
in this case. And then our customization is using the same variables, specifically for the color, we're gonna do no color, so we're just gonna see the text and not the color of the label itself. We can see all of the labels, we just need to add the tooltips so that when we hover over these, we're going to see the specific price level. Next, we're gonna take care of our historical sessions. So if we are over our specific number of historical sessions in the settings, we're going to delete the past ones. This is larger than we have our show last variable. However, since we're pushing two boxes at a time, this is going to be multiplied by two. And we're gonna be adding one so that we can always show the current one regardless of the number that is being inputted by the user. So for the boxes, we're going to have to delete two at a time. So we're going to go from one to two by one. And we're going to delete the last boxes in the box array. And for the lines, we're going to have to delete 20 at a time. So we're going to go from one to by one, as well as the labels. So once we save, not only the last one is showing, as we can see, and as we add them, they're going to pop up in the past. Last part is going to be the alerts, and for these we're going to have our main um, alert variable. So if this is on, we're going to be looking for these, and if the i is higher than our alert level, and we're currently looking for the specific um, alert then we are going to turn off the alert first of all and then we're going to do the alert message lastly the alert frequency which is going to be once per bar we're going to do the same thing for the other four and that's it all right so now we have our fully working script and it's going to be released as open source this code specifically was based on a custom script request that I created. And this sort of shows you how I think about a model from an algorithmic standpoint, the elements of time and price, and how you should frame your models as well, in my opinion. This said, I hope you learned something and I'll see you soon.